Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. The north of Europe is a cold but interesting part of the world. What's so interesting about it I find is there are so many names you'll hear for chunks of it being referred to as. Words like Nordic, Scandinavia and Baltic all spring to mind. Nordic is perhaps the most all encompassing of these words. The term covers the nations of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden and all the extra land these nations have like Greenland and Svalbard. Meanwhile just Scandinavia refers to just the nations of Denmark, Norway and Sweden. Baltic, the name we're interested in today however, refers to none of the aforementioned places. Instead it refers to the three nations of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. In all of this I feel poor Finland loses out the most. While it's a Nordic country, it doesn't belong with either the Scandinavian countries, which many presume, or the Baltic countries, which many presume too. Poor Finland. Anyway, that's enough of being sad for Finland. You guys know what today's video is all about. Today we're going to be looking at the countries that make up the Baltic states slash countries slash republics slash nations as they are known as variously. Honestly though, I kind of just like the Baltic. It has a much nicer ring to it. And we've made videos like this in the past where we've looked at aforementioned Scandinavia and the much warmer Iberia. If you've seen those videos, you will know how this one will go down too. We'll be looking at the countries that make up the Baltic and their capitals and find out how they got their names. Plus, I'd like to dive into some other fun facts about the countries too. However, something I find myself thinking about too is why are these three countries tied together to form the Baltic states? What is the unifying factor between the three of them? There are many countries which reside next to each other on our planet, but you don't hear them forming little groups like this. Well, it seems that the main thing that ties them together is their location, or being next to the Baltic Sea, which we'll talk about soon enough, as their cultures, national identities, or even languages aren't that similar. The languages of Latvian and Lithuanian both descend from Balto-Slavic branches, while Estonian is a Finnic language, tying them much closer to Finland, who as we mentioned, don't get the chance to be part of this club. And while they do have a shared history, some think this isn't enough to really unite them. I was reading ideas as to if these three nations should unite as one, and many seem to think not. It was interesting to read that while Latvia might share borders with both nations, and have some other things in common, that bond isn't there between Lithuania and Estonia. Though this is just me regurgitating from one person I found speaking online. I'm sure there are many Lithuanians and Estonians who live and work together. Nevertheless, a connection has been made between these three countries, and the concept of the Baltic states has endured since. There's even the Baltic Assembly, an intergovernmental organisation between the three nations that aims to find a common position on international issues. Anyway, before we look into the specific names for these nations, let's look into the name of this land there as a whole. Why exactly is it called the Baltic anyway? Well, this region of land is actually named after the sea next to it, the Baltic Sea, and once again, just to make things confusing about why these three countries are called the Baltic, other nations reside on the Baltic Sea too but aren't considered Baltic. This includes Finland, Russia, Poland, Germany and Sweden, as well as the Baltic countries. Why all these countries aren't considered Baltic, I'll never know. Borders are truly silly things. As for what the name Baltic means, there seems to be a few ideas. Initially it was the medieval Latin Balticus, and this is probably believed to come from one of two origins. It either comes from the Lithuanian Balatas meaning white, or the Scandinavian Balata meaning belt slash straight. In all honesty, both of these make sense as the sea and the surrounding land is rather white, what with the snow and all. However, it meaning belt and straight makes sense too. There are other bodies of water that have names like this too, like the Strait of Gibraltar and the Baltic Sea's narrow like a belt and somewhat straight. Both really could be the correct answer, we just don't know. Though what's interesting is that in Germanic languages like German and Dutch, the sea is named the East Sea as it's in the east of these countries that call it that. Though this hasn't transitioned over to English, which is weird as English is too a Germanic language and the Baltic is to the east of England. Though what about the countries that make up the Baltic? First off let's look into Latvia. Latvia covers an area just over 64,000 kilometers, but within that land are around 2 million residents. While I'm sure for a lot of people snow will come to mind when they think of Latvia, 54% of the country is forest, making it one of the greenest countries in Europe. It even has sandy beaches, though the water is apparently rather chilly, which is understandable. The Latvian flag has been in its current use since 1280, meaning it's one of the oldest flags still in use, the only one older than it being Denmark's. And something I found really interesting, a Latvian man who went by the name Jacob W. Davis when he emigrated to the USA is credited as the inventor of something you may be wearing right now. Jeans. 
As for the name Latvia, it seems to follow the etymology of the countries we see so often, with it being named after a group of people, with this group of people being the ancient tribe of the Latgalians. Where the name comes from however seems to remain a mystery. What's interesting however is that the name was Latinized to Latgalia, and some languages to this day use names for the country that sound more like this than the English Latvia. Take the German name for the country, Letland, and the Spanish Letonia. In fact, this name has even had effects on the English language too, as another name for the Latvian people in English is the Lets, though I must admit I've never heard this term and Wikipedia itself claims that the term Lets is becoming obsolete. Latvia's capital Riga is home to about one third of the entire Latvian population. It is also known as the Paris of the North due to how beautiful the city is and I can vouch for this as it's a part of the world I've actually had the pleasure of visiting. While I can vouch for its nickname, I can't say too much for its actual name as we don't seem to know too much about it. One idea is it comes from the Livonian language word Ringa which means loop, referring to the natural loop in the river by Riga. Also, the Livonian language belongs to the Livonian people, another group of people who have resided in North Latvia and South Estonia. I should have mentioned them earlier. Though, speaking of the Livonians who lived in South Estonia, now is a good time to start talking about Estonia. Estonia is much smaller than Latvia, at just over 45,000 kilometers squared, and this is reflected in their population too, with just over 1.3 million people residing in the country. A population this low means that Estonia is actually one of Europe's least crowded countries. Luckily, you can traverse all that space with their free public transport, at least in their capital anyway. And most interestingly, Skype was invented by a team of Estonians. In fact, the people of Estonia are very tech savvy, and the capital has been dubbed the Silicon Valley of Europe due to how many startups have well started up there. Now, when it comes to the name Estonia, there's a trap you may fall for, and that's thinking that the name derives from the word East, as Estonia sounds somewhat like East, and Estonia is in the east of Europe. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. Once again, it's a group of people who have to look towards for this name, this time being the Esti people. These people were written about by Roman historian Tacitus in 98 AD. However, there were some major differences between them and modern Estonians. First off, they were believed to be a Baltic people, and as we mentioned, modern Estonians are Finnic. And where Tacitus talked about the Esti people residing does not match up with modern Estonia. So Estonia is named after these people who they have very little in common with, which is pretty odd now that I think about it. Their capital city of Tallinn however has a much more interesting story as how its name came to be. And once again, like with Estonia, the name is thought to possibly derive from people not actually native to the land. The name is believed to come from the old Estonian Tani Lin, which means Danish town slash castle, as the castle there and the subsequent town were built by the Danish. However, others have put across the idea the name might also be translated into meaning winter town slash castle, or even farmstead town slash castle. However, this isn't the name the city has always gone by. For a huge amount of history, between the 13th and 20th century, the city was known as Reval, and prior to this, the city has gone by a slew of different names, primarily because the city has been under control of so many different people. Primarily, though, the city has been under control of the Russians, Danish, Germans, and finally Estonians. In its history, the city has been known as, and apologies for pronunciation here, Kualavan, Kolivan, Lindanzia, Rafala, and of course Reval, as we mentioned. It seems the name Tallinn was brought back when Estonia achieved independence in 1918. And finally, we have Lithuania, which is the largest of the Baltic states in size and population at over 65,000 kilometers big and have a population of almost 2.8 million people. From my research, it seems that Lithuania is home to some really old stuff. I found that the oldest tree in Europe is in Lithuania and that Lithuanian is one of the oldest languages in the world today. Lithuania is also considered to be at the geographic centre of all of Europe. While it definitely doesn't look like the centre of the continent to myself, apparently this was figured out by using the centre of gravity of the geometric figure of Europe, whatever that means. Though something that makes much more sense to us is the meaning of the name Lithuania. There is a popular belief that the name comes from the Lithuanian Liti, meaning terrain, as it seems the nation is rather rainy. But despite this, there isn't actually any proof that the name comes from this. A more popular theory is that the name relates to the Latin litus, meaning shore, and the name would mean shoreland, which would make sense as the country is over 260 kilometers of coastline. So the name may be water-related, just beach water, not rainwater. And Lithuania's capital is called 
called Vilnius. This name too is watery based, being named after the Vilnius river that runs through the city. Though this leaves us with the question, where does this name come from? Well apparently this means to surge, which makes sense as the waters of rivers do often surge. And I imagine this one is no different. The legendary story as to how this city came to be is fun too. The story goes that the Grand Duke of Lithuania at that time was on a hunting trip in a nearby forest. One night on the trip he had a strange dream, that upon a hill where he had recently killed a bison that day stood an iron wolf. On this hill it howled out with his head raised in pride. When he woke he consulted with one of his priests about this dream, who told him it was a sign to build a town there, and so the town was founded where the iron wolf once stood. Now, you may think this is all the countries of the Baltic covered, however there's actually one more, well, kind of. In the capital of Lithuania, we have the neighbourhood of Uzupis, which on April 1st, 1998, declared itself independent as the Republic of Uzupis. Now, if you couldn't tell by the fact this was on April 1st, and this was done as something of a silly joke. But nevertheless, it has its own government, president, constitution, flag, and currency. At less than one kilometer square in size, it's one of the smallest republics in the world, but one nonetheless. So let's look into that name. The name actually ties in neatly with Vilnius as it means beyond the river or even the other side of the river as well that's where the republic is. The highlight of this republic however has to be their constitution which includes points such as people have the right to be happy, people have the right to be unhappy and most importantly a dog has the right to be a dog. Just Latvia was suggested by Elizabeth Westner, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains patron saint of Latvia. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a Name Explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a Name Explained Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay updated on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Susan at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.